Okay. So the next requirement comes in to us. It says customers place sales orders for various items. By items, we understand from the context that you're talking about products. Each sales order specifies several items and the quantity, unit price, and required delivery date for each item ordered. Okay, so we're talking about a typical sales order. You say, well, this is my sales order, and in the sales order, I want five, uh, you know, five pounds of coffee. I want uh, six boxes of XYZ cereal, and I want two cans of soda, right? So that's what it is. The, uh, uh, you know, the, the soda and the other items I mentioned, these are the products. And for every product, we have the quantity. And in addition, we also have the required delivery date for each item. Okay, and it also says the same item can appear several times in the same order, but with different delivery dates. Okay, so clearly what you're seeing is you've got the sales order, and within the sales order, you've got many different items within the sales order. Okay, now we've already seen how to model something like this. We said, well, if you think about it broadly speaking, what is happening is you've got customers, you've got sales orders, and a customer may place many sales orders, and every sales order is placed by only one customer. This is coming from common sense. This is not mentioned in the requirements. Okay, now it says that a sales order can have many products, but and every product can appear in many sales orders. Okay, so clearly you're seeing that there's a one-to-many relationship between customers and sales orders and a many-to-many -many relationship between sales orders and products. Okay, now we already know from prior discussion that whenever there is a many-to-many -many relationship, you have to have an associative entity. Okay, we have seen the reasons for this in prior lectures and uh, you will do very well to, to review that section that is central to understanding entity relationship diagrams. Okay, so clearly we see this entity type called customer. We're going to create a new entity type for sales order and customers and sale or sales orders, there's a one-to-many relationship. That much is clear. Now between sales orders and products, there's a many-to-many -many relationship. We need an associative entity and that associate entity is really going to be a uh, sales order line. That's what I'm calling it, sales order line. You could call it anything, right? Because it's a many-to-many -many between sales orders and products, and this is the associative entity we create, okay? Now, this is a very commonly occurring theme. We've seen examples of this already, okay? And uh, it says for every item, there is the unit price, required delivery date, and quantity. Okay, so it says that unit price. Okay, now you may think, well, is unit price not an attribute of, shouldn't it be an attribute of product? Like, you know, a pen costs a dollar or a coffee mug costs, uh, you know, 250. Shouldn't that be an attribute of product? It says, no, it is an attribute of order line. In other words, what they're saying is that the same item, when it occurs on one sales order could be priced at, let's say, a dollar. And when it occurs on a different sales order, it might be priced at, let's say, 95 cents. Why? Well, maybe they've ordered uh, 25 units of the particular product in this second sales order, and therefore you're giving them a quantity discount. Okay? So price could change depending on the sales order on which the item occurs. Okay? But it could also be that a particular organization has a fixed price, in which case you would put it in product. But in the present context, we're saying the price may change on every sales order, so we put the attribute of unit price in the sales order line. Okay, so this is the what the, the requirement here is modeled as shown in this particular diagram. Okay, this is, uh, you should make sure that you carefully uh, look at it and understand everything that's going on in this particular diagram. This is uh, one of the more important aspects of this whole model that we are looking at. Okay, so let's move on here. So the ER diagram right now looks like this. We've got employee, we've got customer, we've got sales order, product, and 
sales order line. Okay, that's the complete ER diagram as it now stands. Okay, still we see that employee is not connected to anything, but that will come as we go forward. Okay, now one very important point you have to note here, which I forgot to mention earlier, is that for sales orders, remember when we talked about associative entities, we said that we have a couple of options for how to specify the primary key of an associative entity. One approach was to use key migration. That is, the primary key of the associative entity type will be made up of the primary keys of the two entity types that it's actually connecting. Okay, so we could have made up the primary key for sales order line by taking up product ID and sales order ID as making up that key. That's a fully valid approach. We could have done that. But I strongly recommend that we follow the approach of giving every entity type its own primary key. Okay, so that's why I said let's create sales order ID, order line ID as the primary key of sales order line. Okay, so sales order line has its own primary key. It does not have to borrow from the participating entities to make up its primary key. Okay, now I'm not saying that using key migration is wrong. It's perfectly correct. We could have done that. In fact, you will encounter many situations where it's actually done. But increasingly, I am starting to recommend an approach where every entity type has its own primary key. And specifically, in the context of your project, you will find that if you follow this approach, you'll save a lot of headaches, okay? Uh, because you're going to build your application pretty much uh, using Apex by pointing and clicking, and Apex works best when you have, when every entity type has its own primary key. Of course, it can handle the situation where you have key migration, but that's a little more complicated, and it's not really worth the trouble. In any case, giving every entity type its own primary key is a cleaner approach. Okay, so that's what we'll be doing uh, in, in this project as well as in uh, your project. That's what I strongly recommend that you do. Okay, and therefore, our entity relationship diagram will not have any key migration at all. Okay, in fact, if you have key migrations, I would strongly recommend go back change the diagram so that no key migration is involved. If you give every entity type its own primary key, then there will actually be no need for key migration at all. Okay, so that's what we are saying here. Uh, any Every entity type, including any associative entity type, gets its own primary key. Therefore, there is no need for key migration in our models. Once again, I stress, I'm not saying that key migration is wrong. I'm not saying that key migration is bad. It's completely valid to use key migrations, but I'm just recommending a clean practice of uh, not using key migration. In other words, giving every entity type its own primary key. Okay, and like I've said already, do this in your project and save yourself a lot of trouble. Okay, let's move on to the next requirement. The next requirement says each CRC employee could be responsible for many customers, right? When we say an employee is responsible for a customer, maybe they are the customer's representative or something like that, okay? So you've got an external customer, you've got your organization, and every external customer has some representative within the organization. That's what you're talking about. So every employee, CRC employee, could be responsible for many customers or none, okay? In fact, there could be some employees who are not uh, who don't have anything to do with customers. For example, you may have people in the accounting department, people in the manufacturing department, and so on. They have nothing to do with, with customers. But then you also have people in the sales department who may have something to do with customers. Maybe even some people in the accounting department may have something to do with customers. Okay, So it's possible that you've got employees who have nothing to do with customers, and you've got employees who are responsible for many customers or one. Okay, But it also says, Every customer has one CRC employee assigned to it, the customer. Okay, so in order to model this, clearly, uh, employee is already on our model, but we have to add, uh, in fact, customer is also on our model, right? So this requirement is not talking about any new entity type. It's only talking about relationship among our existing 
entity types and therefore we take our existing VAMP and our existing VCUST customer and show the one-to-many relationship between employees and customers. One employee might have many customers or none, so the dashed line here, but every customer is connected to one employee, so solid line here. Okay, in other words, customer has obligatory participation in this relationship, employee has optional participation. That's what this implies. Okay, so with that relationship added, our diagram now looks like this. Okay, our ER diagram looks like this. And uh, let's then move on to the next requirement. Okay, now when you're drawing your ER diagrams, uh, it's a good idea for you to lay out the diagrams also in a very simple, easy to follow manner. Okay, you don't want things all over the place and lines crossing over each other and stuff like that. So you should try and organize your diagram in such a way that lines are not crossed. And later on, I'll, I'll also show you that you don't want any diagonal lines. All the lines should be horizontal or vertical. No diagonal lines. And I'll show you how to avoid diagonal lines. We'll see that shortly. Okay, so the next requirement says each sales order is approved by one CRC employee or none and each CRC employee might approve several sales orders or none okay in fact it should be uh, each sales order is approved by one CRC employee okay not none okay so clearly what we are seeing now is again a relationship between two existing entity types employee sales order we already have those two entity types. All we are talking about is a relationship between them. Okay, and therefore our diagram looks like this. Okay, clearly uh, the, there's a disconnect between the way in which I worded the statement and the diagram actually, because we are saying each sales order is approved by one CRC employee or none. Okay, actually what I meant is that each sales order is approved by one CRC employee. This or none is actually wrong. It shouldn't be here. Okay, and therefore your diagram looks like this, right? An employee may not approve any sales orders or might approve many sales orders, but every sales order is definitely approved by one employee. Okay, so note that there's a small problem here. I should not have said or none here. Okay, that's, that's a mistake. Okay, so with that in place, our ERD looks like this. Now this is where the point I mentioned earlier comes into play, right? So we said, uh, when you try to connect employee and sales order, you will get one big diagonal line in uh, in the designer. Okay. In fact, let's jump into uh, into the designer and take a look at this. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to do close the existing design. Okay. And then let's create a new model. So here in this new model, I am creating. I'm creating an entity type I'm just just doing something to show you okay I'm going to create another entity type Okay, I'm just trying to illustrate the diagonal. So suppose you have these two and then you try to connect them with a the line. Okay, so I connect them with the line. Uh, let's say we connect. Now you see that this line is a, a diagonal line. We don't want any diagonal lines in our model. Okay, so to clean up this line, what you can do is select, click on the line itself. Okay, in fact, this line is solid here and dashed here, but that's not coming out very clearly. In fact, even the crow foot here is not appearing very well. So the diagonal lines are actually pretty bad. They make diagrams look more complex than they need to be. Okay, to change that, I want to have our lines which are only horizontal and, and vertical or vertical. So we need to have a bent line uh, that will actually go like this or like this. Okay, so to get that, select, click on the line itself. When you click on the line, you'll see that the two endpoints of the line are highlighted to indicate it's selected. And then you right click on the line and then you say add elbow. Okay, when you add elbow, you get this thing 
and by dragging this you can actually make your lines neater okay you can either put it that way or I can drag it along this way okay so you can also determine where it connects by moving this up and down you can determine you know move you have a lot of options in terms of doing this okay so you can do this okay so that's the way to get uh, uh, you know to make the lines only horizontal and vertical and to avoid diagonal dashed lines okay so that's how I got this line to be like this in fact this one requires two elbows not one elbow right so notice that it's bending twice so whereas our earlier diagram here this is bending only once okay suppose for some reason I want one more elbow I can always click again go here add elbow and then I can you know uh, I can do it like this okay so you can get as many elbows as you want quite often just you know I don't think of a situation where you may need more than three elbows that's very very unlikely okay so this is how our diagram now stands